Hey y'all, my name is Doug. I'm with the Watershed Stewards Program. I serve at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Lodi, California. And I've been stuck here at home in Manteca, California for a little while. Basically right on the banks of the San Joaquin River. Uh, and I was exploring near my house the other day and found something pretty cool. So check this out. See this structure? What do you think made that? A beaver, a beaver made it, it's a beaver dam. I saw this and thought it would be a cool opportunity to talk about beavers, their behavior, and how they affect the ecosystem around them. Uh, so let's jump right in. So beavers, what's the big deal? Well, they are among the largest rodents in the world other examples of rodents are like mice and squirrels and gophers, things like that. So they're really big. Beavers have incredibly large teeth on the front of their face that they use to saw through wood. Uh, they can saw through pieces of wood up to three feet thick. And fun fact, those teeth never stop growing throughout the entire beaver's life. So they have to continually be chewing on wood to keep them short. Beavers are mostly nocturnal, meaning that they are most active at night. So each night for about 12 hours, beavers are busy building and maintaining their habitat, as well as finding food. So what do beavers eat? Well, they are strict vegetarians, so they only eat plants. They love to eat the bark off of trees, as well as leaves, some mushrooms, and even some agricultural crops. Beavers are often called ecosystem engineers because they have a unique ability to change a landscape and create a habitat that is suitable for them. Beavers might make their homes in natural habitats like ponds, marshes, rivers, and wetlands, or man-made ones like irrigation ditches and wells. Once they select a habitat to settle in, Beavers will construct intricate dams, lodges, and canals to transform the territory into their ideal ecosystem. Okay, now that we know a bit more about kind of what a beaver does, um, let's take a look, closer look at the dam. I am very excited for this. So here I am standing at the upstream side of the beaver dam. It's right behind me there. And this is pretty cool to see the, the sticks and all the mud that's being used to stop the flow of water, um, to see it up close. You can see I'm basically just walking on mud and sticks that the beavers have collected and stacked right here. And the organization is pretty interesting. Put long sticks sideways and short sticks the other way and uh, wow you can see how much higher the water is on the right side than it is on the left this dam is holding a lot of water back and it needs to be extremely strong to be able to hold this much water um, the beavers take a lot of time to, uh, packing all of the little spaces in with mud and small sticks just to hold back all of this water so if I look downstream, it's flowing really quickly. The water is. But if I look upstream, it's like a glassy pond. And that's exactly what the beavers want. I'm on a log a little bit upstream from the dam and there is just such awesome evidence of beavers around here. Check this out. Look at all those grooves in there from their teeth. Oh, and this is great. You can clearly see these, these two little marks just from their front teeth. So cool. Here's some more bark that's stripped off. So that's their food source. And there's a lot of it around here. Remember when I said beavers can cut through some pretty thick branches? Look at this thing. This is probably about a foot thick. And just look at how much work these beavers have put into trying to cut this. It's almost there. Here's another example of a really thick tree that 
the beavers have basically taken down. It's a big tree. Oh, they're so close to sawing through this one. Wow. So beaver dams are really cool and I suggest going out and exploring in your own backyard trying to find them. Uh, and you can look for the things that you saw in this video to uh, be able to confirm that it is in fact a beaver dam. Now let's go check out the pond upstream from here and see uh, what's going on there. So now that we've seen how interesting the dams themselves are, let's talk about the ponds that form just upstream of the dams. Why do you think beavers would want to flood this area? Well, it's a couple reasons. One, they need to slow the water down so that their house doesn't get swept away, basically. Like we just saw, they live in basically piles of sticks, which float. And if the water's moving too fast, it'll just sweep their house away. So they try to slow the water down. Second, have you ever seen a beaver out of water? Probably not, but if you have, they're not very fast. Uh, they're very awkward on land, um, whereas in the water, they are very fast, very agile, um, basically very graceful in the water. So in the same way that humans build roads to move around easier, beavers flood rivers. They use the water as a transportation device to move sticks around and basically just to be, to be able to access more things. So it's really smart of them to create these flooded areas so that basically they can move around easier. Beavers tend to help out a lot of other species too. Beaver ponds create wetlands, which is an important habitat for other mammals, birds, frogs, and turtles. Fish especially benefit from beaver ponds. Many studies show that beaver ponds are more rich in insects, which is fish food, than other habitats. Beaver ponds also provide an important protection area for young fish from things that want to eat the little fish or from strong currents that will just sweep them downstream. Beaver ponds will also slow water down, which helps to put more water into the ground, which can feed the plants around the river. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about how cool beavers are and how if you go exploring in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. <laughs>